Esports fans, uh, the cable lug on the end of this uh, positive cable that went to my snowplow motor it was just totally rusted out. Nothing left of it. So I cut that end off and I cut off the insulation off the end of the wires and off the end of the wire and cleaned it up as as good as I could. And uh, but I don't have a ready-made cable lug, a wire terminal, a cable terminal. Whatever you want to call it, I don't have one of them on hand, but uh, it's easy enough to make one if you have some copper tubing. You start out with a piece of copper tubing that uh, will be uh, big enough to slide over the end of that uh, cable. Uh, you're probably better off having to cut off a couple strands off that bundle to make it a little bit smaller than you are uh, using a way bigger size. So let me show you how this is done. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to smash the end flat in the vise. Now, you just try to guess, you know, you've probably seen cable terminals, cable lugs, whatever you want to call these, often enough to know how long the flat part with the hole of the bolt would go through would be. So you just kind of guess on that because it really doesn't matter if it's a little bit longer or a little bit shorter, as long as it's big enough to get a hole drilled through it and uh, flat enough to have a Big and flat enough to have a nice flat surface for your nut to uh, clamp down on. And you'll also notice that I didn't cut this to size right away. And th remember that when you're working with anything with uh, steel, wood, you name it. Um, if you can do most of your work before you cut it to length, it gives you a lot nicer handle to hold on to than if I just cut this as long as I needed it and then tried to do all my drilling operations and grinding operations. Uh, by holding that little teeny piece. It's much nicer to hold on to this big long handle. Now look at that. It's already starting to look like something is, isn't it? Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole in it. Alright, I got the drill in the uh, chucked in my drill press here. I got my uh, piece of uh, there we go. I got my piece. I got it center punched and I got the correct size drill for the hole I need. And you see how much nicer this is having this uh, long piece of handle on here than if I would have cut the stock to the exact length I needed right away. Okay, what I'll do here is I'll put this camera in the tripod and we'll drill a hole in this thing. There we go. Now she's really starting to look like something, huh? We're getting there. Now we're gonna, next step is to make it look like it's a store-bought one here. We'll uh, get the burrs off and we will grind our corners round. It's starting to look kind of like a store bought one now. Now all we got to do is cut her to length. All right, I got to use a tubing cutter to do this in this case, but you know, actually, I think you might be better off using a hacksaw or some type of saw because that way you won't have to deburr it. But I'm going to use the tubing cutter anyway. You just try to guess about the length it would be if you were getting a store-bought one and you try to imitate that. Probably end up being a little bit longer than a store-bought one, but it doesn't take too much to cut it off. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do here is I'll just take this reamer and ream out that end. With that big long handle we had on there up till right now, uh, we didn't have to use a vise to hold anything until this this operation here. And once I'm done here, we are effectively done making it. Then it's just a matter of putting it on the uh, cable itself. 
want to make sure you're rearing it off pretty good because the wires, there's going to be plenty of wires going through there and you need room. You probably actually have to clip off a couple strands. But you got to choose the lesser of two evils. Cutting off a few strands or using a bigger piece of copper tubing. That... There's our finished product. Let's see if we... I don't know well, you can see it. Maybe I get better and better light here. Let's just see. There's our finished product. It kind of resembles a store-bought one, doesn't it? It might be a little bit longer, but it'll be okay. Now let's take it over and see how well it fits on the cable. Hey, not too bad there. I was able to just slid, got every strand but one in, and uh, it slipped over really nicely. Okay, now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crimp that and I'm just going to use a pair of regular old wire cutters to crimp it. All right, so what I did is I just took a pair of wire cutters and I crimped it several times on coming from both sides. And uh, that'll work pretty good. It might not be that pretty. Ideally, I would have put some heat shrink insulation on first, but I don't have any, so I'm just going to have to go with the black tape. And uh, But I've done these a number of times uh, over the course of years, and they do hold up. Uh, you won't be disappointed if, if you make one of these. It'll... It'll work quite well. In fact, uh, the main uh, cable, battery cable going down to the starter on this truck, uh, I used this and, geez, how many years ago? That was five years ago, and uh, it's holding up fine. So it's a great way to get by when it's, uh, you know, Sunday evening and all the stores are closed, and uh, and you gotta get you got to keep going. So if you liked what you saw here, I'd appreciate it if you liked, shared, and subscribed. Do you have everything it takes to make this the number one channel on YouTube? And we'll see you here again next time on the Fix Yourself channel.